action, the press preview, a first look at what is on the front pages. Uh, time to see what's making the headlines with the Conservative commentator Tim Montgomery and the journalist and broadcaster Jenny Kleeman. Welcome to both of you. Your reaction, first of all, we watched some of it outside, didn't we? We did. And your first words were, this is not edifying, which is something that Sam picked up on. And I think that's what I talked to a few people on the phone, family, etc. And I think this talking over each other mm. didn't appeal to anyone. And Rishi Sunak was warned about that before. I think if you remember the Tory leadership debates, he talked quite a bit over Liz Truss. I think, for rightly or wrongly, people are more against men talking over women. I don't think that goes down particularly well. <laughs> Having said all that, though, Anna, I think there is a huge sigh of relief you can hear emanating from Tory HQ tonight. You know, these last couple of days haven't been good for the Conservative Party. Nigel Farage entering the fray. The Tory party is, on average, sort of 20, 25 points behind in opinion polls. And it may only be two points, but that snap poll from YouGov tonight saying that, the Tor that Rishi Sunak was 2% ahead of Keir Starmer. The Tory party will be holding on to that like a <laughs> life raft. Oh, <laughs> and uh, it may not be very much, but when you are as badly knocked about in this race as the Tories have been so far, this little glimmer of hope will just give the Prime Minister a little bit of spring in his step tomorrow. Yes, there's the question. Leaving aside your own party preference, who do you think performed best overall in tonight's debate? Jenny? Clinging on to that 2%. I mean, I think, personally, I think I, people would be less likely to vote after watching that debate, just because... Well, that might a, be the Tory strategy to well, press exactly. everyone. <laughs> it, was so, it was so frustrating to watch, because you had Sunak being, as you would expect, tetchy, talking over Julie Etchingham and uh, Keir Starmer. And then you had Keir Starmer allowing these blows to land, this £2,000 tax rise thing. Over and over again, mm. Sunak was able to say that. And, and really, Starmer wasn't able to rebut it. He said at one point at the end, this is ridiculous, but we won't go into the details now. It was, it was weak. And mm. Starmer is the one with every, everything to lose in, mm. in all of this. Uh, but meanwhile, I mean, I did think it was kind of quite desperate from, from Sunak, a lot of it. The amount, I think he mentioned furlough five times. He was like, please, think of me as Mr Furlough. You liked me then. Remember that. And this idea, you know, that we're living in these unsafe times. You don't want to be with an unknown quantity in unsafe times. And, um, but he shouldn't have been able to land the blows that he did. And I was quite surprised that he was able to land anything at all, given how uncomfortable he is. They both are so uncomfortable, but given how prone he is to being uh, being tetchy and, and, and looking like he's not smooth and in control mm. um, in, in these debates. I, I, th I, think, I think you could see who was the person behind in the polls and who was ahead. Yes. I think Keir Starmer turned up tonight, a little bit as you say, just to not to make a mistake. Yeah. And therefore he wasn't throwing the punches in the way it's... Sunak was there, you know, really going for it. He needed to make a difference. And some people will have liked that aggressiveness, some people will have not liked it at all. But you could definitely see who was the person who needed to change the weather today. And it wasn't the Labour leader, it was the Tory leader. Didn't OK, it? well, let's see how the newspapers reacted, those that maybe adapted their front pages. Finishing only, only half an hour, it gets quite late for them. Uh, starting with the Daily Mail, then, leading with that first leaders' debate ahead of this year's general election, with the headline, Fiery Rishi comes out swinging and lands big blows. Shaky start for Farage, that is on the front of the Metro, after the Reform UK leader had a milkshake thrown over him while launching his uh, personal election campaign in Clacton in Essex. Financial Times reporting on Indian voters delivering a shock to Prime Minister Narendra Modi as the ruling party failed to win a majority in the elections there. The mirror marks the 80th anniversary of the D-Day landings. And on the front of the star, killer whales that attack boats are not aggressive, but just bored teens, according to new research. Well, a reminder, by scanning the QR code, you can see uh, on screen during the programme, you can check out the front pages of tomorrow's newspapers while you watch us. Still some coming in, as you might have gathered from that. But let's head back to Tim Montgomery and Jenny Kleeman. Didn't catch the mail. Let's see it now. Uh, Fiery Rishi comes out swinging and lands big blows. You <laughs> I did, did not land big blows. <laughs> I think this was, as I said, this is... Are storm you saying the Daily Mail isn't telling the whole <laughs> truth, Jenny? I can't believe it. You know, well, they had to write the headline quite quickly. <laughs> I mean... 
There were audible groans when he was talking about the NHS and he was saying, yes, of course, COVID and the strikes have, have meant that, uh, that things are terrible. And when he made that, it was ridiculous, the thing that he was saying about the waiting lists, that they'd be going down when they were demonstrably not going down. You know, he, he, he didn't land big blows. I think this was Starmer's to, to lose. And it's more that Starmer wasn't really able to, to fight back when Rishi Sunak was saying things that are... Uh, demonstrably false. I mean, you saw jo Jonathan Edwards there better able to rebut it than, than Keir Starmer. Ashworth, which, yeah. Jonathan yeah. Ashworth. <laughs> Ashworth, yes. Um, you know, and this was really... This was really worrying, really. It was, you know, all of these things, the debate... It's almost like they don't... They assume that most people aren't going to be watching all of it. It's all about clips, what's going to be clipped up oh, and, and put on social media, what's going to be clipped up and put on the news. Mm. All that stuff about waiting lists in the NHS, would you go private... And, and Rishi Sunak saying, yes, I would go private. Keir Starmer saying, no, these are things that they will, you know, that they will be, be gripping hold of. But watching the entire thing, I found it really frustrating. I wish there was, there was something a bit better in our politics than, than yeah. these but, but is that a format issue? Many people suggesting, once again, it's too short. And we've had this before. The time constraints, nobody finishes a sentence. No, no thought is properly conceived and therefore cannot be explained properly. So, you know, is there an element of that about it, do you think? I'm sure there is. And... I think we live in a soundbite age, and I'm afraid we had the soundbite debate. Keep it short. Tonight. Yeah, no. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought Rishi, and it's not in the mail particularly, um, although they know they've got the £2,000 thing here. Mm. Now, I think this is the beginning of what I hope, from a Conservative pers an analyst perspective, is going to be a huge Conservative campaign. And Jenny and you might, and all viewers might be about to be really bored of this. But up until now, I think the Conservatives have been saying Labour have no plan. I think that's, been a, that's not been a sensible strategy. You're not going to frighten voters by saying Labour have no plan. The Tories are not going to change perceptions of themselves over the next few weeks. People have made their decision about the Conservatives after 14 years in power. What the Conservatives have an opportunity in the remainder of the election campaign is to attach a price tag to Labour, to say, do you really think that Labour are going to come into power after having criticised the underfunding of the NHS, underfunding of schools, underfunding of police, and not put up your taxes? Every Labour government in history has raised taxes. Well, it's and in they're DNA, now... In their DNA. In their the DNA. Well, and, you're, and, you're, and the Conservative Party, a slightly odd advert I've seen tonight with a sort of pig flying over a cityscape. But um, I think this is the number you're going to hear again and again now. Labour are going to so raise it, your taxes it's gone by from £2,000. Labour don't pounds. have a plan to Labour have a cunning plan. A secret plan. <laughs> and, and we have costed this secret plan. And, and Starmer was really thrown um, by this. Like you, or, And he shouldn't have been. But the he other thing is, been. also, he was trying to respond. Julie Etchingham was, was stopping him. He was frustrated by that. But, you know, there are many places where he could have come back. And it was he, he was weak when he was saying, we won't go into the details, but that's ridiculous. You must go into yeah. the details. Yeah. I mean, you make a good point. Let's take a look at The Guardian, if we've got a leaders' clash on money. Migration, tax and the NHS, an ill-tempered debate. Oh. Is there no point doing this till we get the manifestos? Are we, are we just... Is it all too early? I mean, the, the, the chat was that Labour's might be back that, end that, of that, next that, week. That is a such good point. I'm, I'm old enough to remember, manifestos basically came at the start of the yes. campaigns. It used to be... I, when I worked for Tory HQ in 2001, we produced our manifesto 48 hours after Tony Blair called the election. And then, you know, people like you, Anna, have the opportunity for the whole of the campaign to grill politicians on what their promises are. I think we're deliberately letting politicians off the hook, really, delaying their manifestos until... I think it's still a week or so away for either of the parties... I heard June the 13th, but I, but I don't think it's been confirmed, but, has it? But, but that means that they can, you know, they can sort of stymie debate until those manifesto launches happen. And only then can we start to cost proposals and grill them properly. And I, I think it, we should be a little bit angry about that than okay. we are. That's tomorrow's job. Right. Okay. <laughs> I get very frustrated by the bludgeoning of the, these, these catchphrases over and over again. Mm. We've got to turn the page. We've got to turn the page on part, part of Starmer. And then also Sunak completely, the whole, he hasn't got a plan. And now that's... That's shifting it yeah, because, into something because else. Because not many messages land, and I think yes. they've worked that out over the years. Haven't but they? it's so, well, it's, so know, but... it's so depressing if you really are looking for ideas. We are at a critical point in this this country where we, we need some a breath of something new, and it is very disappointing that all we're getting is is these messages and sound bites over and over again. And yes, I, I think if we did have these manifestos, we could actually talk talk about points of detail. Yeah, or election moments, which we'll come on to, obviously, which is Nigel Farage and a yes. isn't it? So plenty more reaction to that debate and what else happened as well. Uh, Mr Farage in Clacton, as you'll know.
Well, welcome back. You're watching our press preview. Bit of hazard tonight because we're reacting slowly to things, aren't we? Uh, the Conservative commentator Tim Montgomery is here and the journalist and broadcaster Jenny Kleeman. Another paper in The Eye, which is also leading on the first of the TV debates for this election, 2024 election, Ignite during angry TV clash. Ignite suggests it was a good thing we saw yeah, there, Jenny, I don't just feel, I don't feel it ignited. I'd say it was certainly angry. Mm. I felt angry watching it. Interesting, they're sort of picking up on Jenny's theme as well. Starmer is slow to deny Sunat's claim about £2,000 tax hikes. I think Labour will regret that. This, is, as I'm trying to argue, is going to be the big Tory tax line. And the fact that Keir Starmer didn't sort of slap yeah. it down immediately, that was, that was, a, that was it, disappointing a, on yeah, the Labour, I, from I, Labour I, point I, of view. It, yeah. it was weak on the part of Keir Starmer. Yeah. Yeah. He should have. I mean, it's interesting to see their, you know, snap headlines as they, as they do with the eye. Ill-tempered contest. Starmer slow to deny the 2000 mm. tax hike claim. Prime Minister is jeered by a studio audience for his false yeah. claim that NHS waiting lists are falling. Clapped, though, to be fair, when he said, I'm not giving taxpayers money for that 35% demand from junior doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, snap poll on which of them won, that YouGov poll, which we reported first, uh, seeming edging it 51% to 49%. They also clashed on state pensions, immigration, human rights, schools and building homes. Meantime, uh, we'll go ahead to the Metro, which is the shaky start for Farage. Um, certainly the eye had suggested he was first mobbed and then shaken, Tim. Yeah, well, look, I, I think Jenny and I might agree on, on this. It was only a milkshake um, today, but it could have been so much worse. And I know a lot of candidates, a lot of MPs, or former MPs now, who do worry an awful lot about their safety, about of their, of themselves and their, and their family. And uh, Farage, I think, initially made a little light about this, but in an interview that's appeared later on this evening, he was sort of saying... He was asked about this and he, said, and he said, actually, it does worry him. He does think about it a lot. And uh, I think we just had the Mexican elections where I think 37 candidates were murdered. Yeah. And so we're not in that league, but we have lost uh, Joe Cox and David Amos, you know, in recent years. The security of our candidates is a big issue. And I would like to see a proper punishment of this woman. Maybe it was only a milkshake, but I think we need to send a message out to everyone. If you if you invade someone, like if you basically assault them, if you're frightening wow. our elected representatives, it's unacceptable. Hurl abuse, say what you like, but when you start to use a physical attack like this, I think it's unacceptable. We need to send the clearest message that's unacceptable. Yeah. And if only Nigel Farage hadn't then put a video out saying, uh, my milkshake brings all the people to the rally, as, as he did. He was making light of it. He I mean, did initially, I, yeah. I would agree that, um, you know, you shouldn't physically attack anybody in mm. public life. You shouldn't throw eggs at the king. You shouldn't throw milkshakes at Nigel Farage. I do think uh, he is an incredible opportunist. And if I lived in Clacton or was part of this constituency, I have relatives of mine who are in that constituency, I'd be incredibly frustrated at having him uh, manipulate this for his own own pure personal But brand, you wouldn't dare do anything like that, would you? Of course not. No. You don't need to do something like that. But, you know, this, this has been a boring election campaign so far, apart from him and the milkshake and Diane Abbott. That's been it. Jenny, Tim, for now, thank you very much indeed. More reaction to The Spin Room coming up at the top of the hour.